Okay, ladies and gentlemen, of course, economics is about the concept of dealing with scarcity. The ultimate goal is happiness, individual and societal. We're focusing now on the idea that every choice has a cost. Now, there are different types of costs. Let's start with the most important cost that there is, and that is the concept of an opportunity cost. Okay, it is the most important concept in all of economics in terms of dealing with the cost. Um, Let's start with a very vague question. What is the cost of protecting the environment? You might get a variety of answers. Common answers are going to be things like, well, millions of dollars in government funding to deal with climate change for a variety of reasons. Uh, we may all have higher prices on gas or trash or pollution, that kind of thing. These are all types of costs, but they are pretty simple. They are known as explicit costs. We're not really looking for explicit costs here because explicit, I mean, it's important but it only gives you a very narrow scope of what the costs actually are. We also hear sometimes the idea that it costs nothing, that I pay nothing for the environment, nothing is coming out of my pocket. The actions that I'm taking are of my own free will. And we forget that that is just garbage, that there is no free in economics at all. Milton Friedman, will you please um, tap the sign? Thank you very much. There is no such thing as a free lunch, says economist Milton Friedman, and this is true. So. What are the costs that we talking about here? We're talking about trade-offs that are made when you make a choice. In economics, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. Scarcity does not disappear. Scarcity just shifts to a different position or becomes a different form of scarcity. A trade-off is what you sacrificed when you made your decision. I decided on choice A, therefore I can't do choice B because I'm doing choice A. A trade-off is simply put, a cost. But there is a type of trade-off that we're dealing with here and that is the implicit kind of trade-off. So, so if I say like, well, these are common things dealing with climate and environment. Um, don't use your dryer as much, simply hang your clothes. That has really no cost. You simply hang your clothes. And the answer to that is it does have a cost. It takes longer to dry and um, I can get pollen and other kinds of things in the clothes so it might affect my allergies. Um, don't take, drive a car to work, walk, bike, or take public transit. Yeah, but some of these things actually have a a monetary cost, but both these things are going to take longer than simply getting in my car and driving. I could be doing something else with the time I save. That is an implicit cost. Simply buy an electric car. Yeah, but the range of an electric car is not like a gas car, and actually there are less places to charge as opposed to gas stations. And so it takes longer to charge as well, and these things are all implicit costs. Uh, grow your own food. This is a really popular one. Um, I would rather not grow my own food because it takes a long time, a lot of energy, and a lot of resources. I know people that grow food much more efficiently and at a cheaper price. And I can take my time and go do something else like prepare to teach or read a book or hang out with my wife. So it does have a cost to grow your own food. Eat less red meat. Uh, what if a prime rib is delicious or bacon is delicious and I actually get a lot of satisfaction from eating meat? So eating less meat does have a cost, even though there's not a price attached to it. Uh, recycle, use less plastics. Um, that's fine, let's recycle, except recycling actually takes more energy. And so doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of recycling? And plastic is fairly cheap. I know there are other ways of doing it that might be environmentally pr friendly, but plastic is actually fairly cheap and, um, and fairly lightweight, and therefore there is a cost. Uh, travel less, okay. Um, then I'm missing out on experiences and diversity and all these things if I travel less. And so that has a cost. Buy more for more environmentally friendly companies. Okay, sure, but environmentally friendly companies often has a higher price attached to them. And what if um, I like companies that are like racially friendly, they're just not environmentally friendly or they're for women's rights, but they really don't care that much about the environment. There are costs other ways too, all right? So there's a lot of different ways you look at implicit costs. Speak out more in support of climate advocacy. This requires me to go to some places and be in, like maybe an activist. But what if I want to do something else? I want to go hiking in the mountains instead of speak out in support of climate advocacy. Maybe I don't like climate advocates either. Um, these are all implicit costs. They don't have a price attached to them. And what we're looking at here is what are the second choice that I gave up. And that is the concept of an op opportunity cost. So when I make a choice about something, like if I decide to hang my laundry instead of put it in the dryer, what will I or did I actually give up? So if I hang my laundry, I'm not putting it in the dryer. And that has costs and benefits. And it is probably um, super important to understand the value of the next best alternative that you gave up when you made a choice. There are choices 
And those choices are made up of the decision you made and then the one choice you did not make. Okay, it is the most important concept of all economics. Remember that each choice has a cost. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Everything you do, do has a consequence. So this is how a result of a decision works. I have my choice. I want to do A or B. And the decision I choose is my actual choice. My decision is I have to do this or that, and I choose to do A. And so that's the decision I choose. The opportunity cost is the value, the overall value of the best alternative I did not select, meaning my second choice. Not what I could have done, because I can really do a lot of things when it comes to choices. I can, you know, I have $100. I could do literally a million different combinations of what to do with that 100 of that million dollars, spend it on all kinds of different things or don't spend it at all. Um, but what I really want to know is if I, you know, spend my million dollars on choice A, what would I have actually spent? Not what could have I spent on, but what would I have done with that million dollars? And it's hard to measure this when you start getting into more complex ideas and complex choices. Okay. So let's talk about like climate change, all right? So these are the, the one through 10 in terms of the biggest impacts of climate change. Children, fossil fuels, transportation, construction, meat, uh, burning wood and ag, uh, producing metal and concrete, deforestation, gas flaring, and trash. I have $40 million, all right? Well, the first thing that people look at is this one up here, children. Should I spend $40 million in controlling population? And the answer in this case is going to be no. Not because the alternative is worse, but, um, Children, cost-benefit analysis, having more people is actually good. It creates, creates economic productivity, and every child you don't have potentially could be one less innovation that actually helps climate change. So economists look at population growth and say that's actually a much more of a positive. There are plenty of resources on this planet. That's not the problem. The problem is how they get distributed efficiently. So we're going to take children out of the running, and let's just say um, fossil fuels to create heat and electricity. That sounds good. I'll put $40 million to uh, create heat and electricity. Now, here's the thing. Because I put the $40 million to fossil fuels that create heat and electricity to try to mitigate that, that means I can't put them in these other things. I've used the $40 million already on number two. Now I can sit here and say, well, then I gave up $40 million for these all these other things. But what I really want to see is what was my second choice? Like if I wouldn't have put $40 million towards fossil fuels, what did I actually give up? And in this case, what I gave up was $40 million to deforestation. So the opportunity cost of putting $40 million to fossil fuels to create heat and electricity is I can't put that $40 million into deforestation. So I can kind of get a good idea looking at past practices. Um, what would have that $40 million did in terms of deforestation? Well, now I can't do that because I'm putting it up here. Remember, we have choices. We have to make choices. So this was my first choice. This is the choice I gave up. And I can see, based on the $40 million, the value in terms of preventing deforestation. Okay, And we can bring this down to a lower level, too. We have, should I go to school or what's my second choice? That's my opportunity cost. If I'm a business, should I put my food truck at 1000 Low Gap Road at the high school or my second choice? That's the opportunity cost. Should I focus on my business, uh, my business on online sales or my second choice? Because that's my opportunity cost. Should I give money to Ukraine if I'm the U.S. government or second choice? Second choice is the opportunity cost. Now, when we're a country, we bring this out even greater. A state's primary choice is you have land, labor, physical capital and entrepreneurship. Is that busy producing goods and services for the military, or is it producing goods and services for civilians? This is known as the guns and butter, okay? Am I taking my goods and services and helping the military production, or am I helping civilian production? Because I have to make those choices with those resources, and yes, it does make a difference putting stuff towards military versus putting stuff towards um, civilian goods. Obviously, less civilian goods and people are really unhappy. Your country becomes unstable. It becomes a bad place to live. You put, but however, you give up military, then, you know, moose from Canada can invade you and that's not a good thing. So you do need uh, a good military and project power around a globalized planet. Okay. So guns is military goods and services. Butter is civilian goods and services. Now, the essential question when we look at each country is, should scarce resources go towards guns or butter? Because you do have to make a choice. And then in the end, it's what amount of scarce resources should go to guns and what amount of scarce resources should go to butter. Because 
when it comes to it, uh, you're not going to put everything towards guns and everything go, go, going towards butter. There's going to be an opportunity cost. So if I have 10, obviously, this would be if I have 10 resources, if I put nine to butter, only one could go into the guns. That's the opportunity cost. If I put six into butter, then only four could go into guns. That's an opportunity cost. And of course, vice versa. Also, if you had 10 resources. So this is where we get into gross domestic product. It's the total monetary the GDP. It's the total monetary value of all finished goods and services produced in a country. And it's our most widely used measure to figure out economic well-being. That's gross domestic product. It's the monetary value of all goods and services that are produced in a country. Is it great? Is it fantastic? Is it perfect? No, it's not. And we're going to look at other measurements as well. But it's right now the most common and widely used measure. So how does guns versus butter work in other countries? Well, this is the current percentage of your GDP that goes towards the military. People often think this number is a lot bigger. When you look around society, though, what you'll notice is the opportunity cost is actually, for in terms of the military, um, you know, it's not like countries use their production primarily on the military. It's actually on civilian goods and services. So 4.1% of everything that is produced in Russia goes to the military. That's pretty high. And actually, it's supposed to go up to six, between 6 and 7% in the next year because they're fighting a war. The United States, 3.5%. During World War II, it was closer to 40. It was like a really ramped up. Iran, 2.6%. The UK, 2.2%. China, 1.6%. That's going to go up as well. And Nigeria and Mexico are less than a half a percent. Okay. So we're looking at opportunity cost, which is the, the value of the next best alternative. What you not what you could have done, but what happened to the alternative that you would have done. That is the opportunity cost. 